guys, it's Belinda from Belinda's Book Nook and here I am for another thoughts and takeaway video. I'm trying to get better. I realize that these things, <laughs> that I tend to talk a lot, so I want to be faster because I don't want you to lose you anywhere along the discussion. Um, so I'm going to try to go faster with this one. Today's book I'm going to do is A Sleeping Dictionary by Sujata Masse. I've had it for a while. I finally read it. Total five star read phenomenal phenomenal book it is a fiction I will call it a historical fiction because she does have some elements in there that are true um, and so this book you know I started out reading the print and then you know me there's an audio and it really they're good audio delivery I'm okay with that and um, and then I went on with that the book is divided into four um, sections. Um, book one is set in Jolpur, India in the spring and summer of 1930. And it follows a young girl. She starts about eight years old and then she's about 10 when a traumatic um, event occurs and um, changes her life um, in the story. And um, I'm trying to make sure I try not to tell, I'm not spoil anything about this book. Um, and so that event occurs and then, you know, we, we next go to book two, which is set in mid Nepal, and that's the summer of 1930 to 35. So she's about, um, 10. So she, she goes from age 10 to 15 in this location. And in this location, she is in working in a girls school in India and the school is for English girls there. This is the time in the 1930s when um, the British are um, are occupying um, India. And I did write, I think, did I do it in here? Yeah, a historical note I wrote, the British Raj refers to the period of the British rule on the Indian subcontinent um, from 1958 to 1947. In 1947, the British withdrew and the area was per, um, partition, partition, excuse me, into two independent countries, India and Pakistan. You know, I love, this is where I say, you know, even fiction can teach you things. You know, I don't know much, as much, I've read a lot of books about India and in India, but I really don't know the history. Excuse me, I'm sorry, my allergies are, are there. Um, the um i don't really know much about the history so it's really interesting to read this and then it forced me to want to well find out well, when did the british come and when did they leave and and you know ultimately <laughs> we all know that they were there to make money right so they um arrived in this into um india and the relationship is just as it is anywhere else that's been kind of colonized um, because it's a mixed. Some people are okay with some of the things that are brought along and other people don't want it. They want their independence and autonomy, right? Um, so this book does show a bit of that. It shows a bit of the struggles, the political uprisings and undertones, and those are included in the story. Um, but the school that um, the character is in, and one thing that I didn't mention is the way that this book starts is fantastic. Like I'll read the very first line to you. I think it's, it's just which it draws you right in. Um, and I'm like that. I love her books anyway, but I thought this is a clever way to start um, the story. And she says, um, this is Jalpur in West Bengal in 1930. And it says, you ask for my name, the real one. And I cannot tell. It is not for lack of effort. In a proper circumstance, the narrator must give her name. In fact, one of the first English phrases I learned was, what is your good name? And that is so uh, important throughout the book, her name. Her name changes throughout the book. She starts out as Palm, as an eight year old, living with her parents. It's her parents, her grandparents, her um, twin younger sisters um, and a baby brother. And um, they are very poor. Her mother is um, to help, you know, make ends meet. Her mother also works to try to help bring in money. And she makes brooms and tries to sell them to the different ladies um, 
that have more of the substantial uh, means to buy them. And so she goes house to house to try to sell the brooms. Um, and one of the places that she goes is a um, aristocrat who um, the wife is pretty kind with her mom and the mom, you know, he basically haggles, tries to get her to buy her broom. And um, Palm is fascinated with this, the lady's daughter. Um, because the daughter is like just dressed in these beautiful frocks and she's just so palm in her head doesn't there's you know because of the class situation they're not introduced but she in her mind names the girl princess and she thinks of her as the princess right when you get to part two in the book palm and princess's path cross again and um it's interesting to see kind of how their relationship develops. Um, I'm making sure I'm not telling you, I don't want to tell you spoilers in this. Um, in book two, when she's at this school working, she has to change her name again. So she goes from Palm, and Dee Dee is another nickname that they, she's called when she's at home, um, to another name. And then from that name, which was Sarah, and, and um, she ends up having to change her name again in book three because she's trying to avoid something that happens. This book is like a movie. I mean, the, it, there's a lot of tragedy, but there's a lot of edge in the seat, which, which kind of keeps you in the edge of your seat when you're reading the book, but you're just so rooting for her. You want you want her to catch a break. You want her to have something great. And that I find to be like, just so motivating to want to keep reading a book. You know, you you get really vested in the character and totally you do with her. Um, the book three is set in Karagpur in 1935 to 38. So she's now 15, so she's 15 to about 18, 17, 18. Um, and Again, other events happen, and for book four and the remainder of the book, she is in Calcutta, and that is from age, mm, I think she's 18, and to about almost 30 years old, so it's so about 10 years, a um, little over 10, yeah, a little over that. Um, the book is is fascinating um you know it explores the issues of caste um you know the the name change for her is is something she has to do to survive um something she has to do to be to fit in um and and so i found that really interesting as well and how she adapts to these new names although she knows who she is even still inside of it. And you watch her go from being a child into an adulthood, um, which is also a really in interesting experience. And everything is going on, you know, around her, but she still holds these stories from each of these different periods of her life. Um, I found it extremely interesting. I actually was able to um, participate in a Zoom session with the author, um, Sujata, and um, I can't remember the name of the other lady. Did I write it? I don't think I wrote it in here. Um, she is, is a historian at, at, I think, Cornell, Columbia. I want to say Cornell University. It's either Cornell or Columbia. And she was talking to the historical accuracies in the book and gave interesting information when we had questions about other things. Um, like I said, this book will definitely make you curious about more about the relationship um, between the British and the Indians in this um, time period. And then I also didn't know about a large portion of or a good portion of Indian population that migrated to um, Canada and and I'm not going to spoil anything, but some of the, you know, 
when I when I was at that Zoom session with Sujata, she talked about that where there was a good portion that weren't able to come to the United States during that time period, weren't really really accepted, and so they went to Canada. Um, and I'm curious about that and what happened with different people. You know, there's all sorts of migration patterns during different time periods, and it's very interesting to find out kind of how um, how it happens. Like you know, getting the means to be able to do that, and then how do you know where you're going and oftentimes are you going to situations where there are no people like you so is there a language barrier what is that experience like and that reminds me also of just like when i'm doing my genealogy research of trying to figure out you know you know you read things but you don't really know you know you just wish you could kind of go in time and just take a peek so you could see what people are experiencing so why did they choose to go here and why did they work there and, and so those are the questions also I have when I was thinking about this book too. Um, this is an excellent, whole, easily a five-star read for me. Highly recommend, I know it's chunky, totally worth it. I can't imagine somebody not liking it, but it, I, I have to say it is sad. There's a lot of sadness in it, but it's such a good story. I mean, it's just really, you can visualize everything. And I did tell Sujata that on the call. I felt like this was a movie that I could just see everything so well by the descriptions here. And it's just a, a fascinating story. Her books are great anyway. This is definitely one one I, I will remember for a time. But anyway, I hope I went faster on this one. It's probably easier when they are fiction, but it's a great book. Um, like I said, it's um, it's got a lot to offer and it, it's make me really curious about the uh, British and the Indian history, especially in that time period. I will talk to you guys later. I hope you all are well. Wash your hands, wear your mask, social distance. Bye.